<laughs> Here we are in our mobile office. <laughs> I understand that. Uh, why don't we start from the beginning? Because uh, this is a sort of recording, so this is for an audience at some point to listen to. And um, I, how about I do a bit of an interview to find out who you are, what you're doing, and then we can speak about perhaps uh, collaboration points or connection points. Awesome. So, would you like to introduce yourselves? I. Okay. Well, my name is Lyra, Lyra Starr, and this is Nathan, Nate Cruz, and we are with Great Works Alliance, inspiring and empowering the hero within everyone through fun gamification of reality, because we believe that everybody should be excited about today, which is the present, right? So here we are uh, looking to collaborate with others who believe that this, this is an exciting new journey that we are on, collaborating together in a co-creation of reality. Okay, uh, those words all sound very nice. Um, how does it translate into the real world? Good question. So at present we have a lot of youth that are involved in games in the gaming community and games and right now because of COVID-19 a lot of children are stuck at home and have to learn through remote education resources this can also be applied to adults in education and growth self-growth and growth within communities we can do this through identifying what their skills their passions and you know their their leanings are whether it is their character virtues that they're most uh affinitive with have affinity with you know we're looking at at heroes and there are heroes not only in dc comics marvel and other cartoon and, and <clears throat> science fiction realities but we can also look at the heroes within our communities today the the community heroes the firefighters the emts your educators your mentors all of those heroes that we look up to and the point here is to present an acknowledgement and recognition for easier in engagement within a community. So if people want to learn more about a subject, they know that there are mentors within their community that they can go to and that there's access to the greater community. And that, you know, we're also looking at how communities need to be more centered in, in helping the every person within that community because we have a lot of people within our communities that are losing their jobs losing their businesses due to these restrictions with the covid panic demic that i call it <laughs> um and right <laughs> and so you know we want to be able to look at new ways of engaging within a community and broadening the understanding of sustainability and regenerative uh practices and possibilities that are out there that communities can adopt mm. so when i look through your materials at a first glance it looked like the merit badges were a primary part of what you're talking about right yeah nope. Could you explain maybe a little bit more about that? I'm going to hand it over to Nate here to talk about meritocracy. Um, it's referenced in the manual as well as on the website. Uh, Greatworksalliance.com. <clears throat> basing off of the most central and common methodologies through different lenses internationally and throughout history we've we've been able to focus focus in on the golden rule where there's a balance of reciprocity and an agreement between two parties or more of non-infringement and <clears throat> building off of that goes into what are some identifiable 
characteristics that we all hold and bleed out into the different type of social circles, whether it's yourself and optimizing the different types of spark within that individual that makes them unique outward into interacting with another individual like yourself and myself and Lyra, where we have different strengths and passions and working out into teams and how can that be done in one of the most effective, efficient ways and stacking on top of that as many other primary factors, kind of using triage, looking at what's the cream of the crop that's long standing in observation of what works and that's gamification. That's one of the largest broad spectrums throughout humanity that everybody throughout history, throughout different cultures, tribes, uh, you know, political parties, what have you, that they're identifying with all converge and kind of let go. It's also a space where science and medicine tell us that we're in that space between subconscious and conscious thought, where a lot of things are really able to get really creative and uh, come up with, with new imaginings new creative things where they kind of converge with things that we already know based on our own observations and our own personalized universes. You know, the lens we see from ourselves outward and we can bring it back in <clears throat> to better comprehending other people's perspectives without much need of confrontation with the use of meritocracy and the use of real meritocracy not using the superficial identification that has been bastardizing meritocracy so so the primary core of that with meritocracy that we've been able to find based on research that's currently you know expected and encouraged to be built upon by any and all input from anybody else is positive psychology and those focus on the core attributes that make an individual who they are that are readily identifiable throughout these different cultures and adding on other lenses and research to that stack on kind of like a snap on system or like a tree where things branch off from the main correspondence. And so there's like the chakra system, um, taking in the different types of research and applications that has been applied, whether it be through different types of shaman, Buddhists, in uh, non-pharma medicine, you know, away from mainstream medicine and stuff like that, just taking in the diversity and locating different areas and way it, ways it might be applied. The Star Trek Federation is one common example we can all kind of identify with and, and understand the inner workings in order to take these things that we see in today's reality and bridge the gap with the fantasy and the history and all these different areas. The eth ethnical lenses, like, you know, what, if you're in India, who are your heroes? How do you identify with those heroes and want to exemplify what they present or represent, you know, in your own life? And then being able to have that cultural ethnic lens then share throughout the global community. So imagine, for example, if you were in a virtual reality and your avatar is um, the Incredible Hulk. And then Krishna, the avatar of Krishna over in India comes over and wants to get involved in something the Incredible Hulk is doing, right? And, and how those two archetypes can be embodied within an individual, within individuals working together. How is that harmonics going to occur? And so these are some of the things we're investigating and want to work with others in collaboration to expand upon because we're becoming more and more of a global community every day. And if we can do it in a positive way instead of a dictatorial way, 
like right now, China is all really big upon statistics of each individual and tracking their activity and limiting their ability to do things based on their ability to pay their bills, for example, mm. you know, so we have that as a dictatorial model. Let's present an opposite and more inclusive model that provides a positive impact and recognition through the meritocracy, through the ability to be able to connect with those that become a part of your dream team. And everybody has the ability to create their dream team through this process. So are, are, these are some of the... So are, well, I'm just wondering about, I mean, it, it sounds as if there is an assessment system is a very big part of this. Mm -hmm. And that within the Chinese methodology, it's the government coming up with the assessment system. And it's linked right. to a reference point that is not necessarily our gifts coming out into the world in a beautiful way with all these surrounding people who love us, but it's more in this rigid sort of infrastructure that we have no control over and that is sort of oppressing us. And so what you're, you're suggesting yeah. is a, a more of a self-assessment system, more of a community-based right. system where you're getting feedback What's what's yes, the difference, here, here. let's say, between the two systems in terms of how do you, what's what things do you assess for yourself and what things are assessed through others? Right. Getting that kind of feedback loop going that's constantly adjusting uh, without being told what to do, but more of a guide of here is an oracle or future roadmap of your your choices before you right now, which one you want to choose. And you have the opportunity for yourself as an autonomous individual to make the choices of make a mistake or choose the high road. And how long is that path going to be for you? It's completely under your control and engaging with others um, at their discretion. We're all at different levels and degrees of education and aptitude, abilities, in front of us, like uh, utilities, access to internet, for example, or uh, badass but, but, software. I just want to interrupt you because because I'm missing. You're going on past a point that I got, and it was um, a choice. Like when you're saying about the choices, how do you identify what the choice point is, and how do you identify? How does that connect? How does that connect the merit system? So skills and passions. there's skills and passions is part of it. The other part of it is the peer to peer network. So if you recognize in somebody else that they are showing compassion or empathy or um, truthfulness or being a humanitarian, that you are by <clears throat> observation presenting that person with that recognition. And then there are those other parts like the skills and passions, where as the individual, you're looking at what, what are your abilities and what do you care about? So to, and just to back up a bit in terms of what you said, in terms of recognize, like do you, like Facebook put little likes beside things? Like when people do things, there's like, how, how do you do what you just said? Well, we have to continue working on this, but the, the, the current structure is we've created this game. It's the DNA game. And it's a, an organizational game that is created based on looking at the character virtues and strengths, the um, sustainable development goals and the wheel of co-creation and how you identify with those. So we're still at the starting point of being able to provide this, this uh, meritocracy model. And we encourage everybody to join us in collaboration. We encourage people, you know, meritocracy can be adopted within pretty much any structure, whether it is a co-op environment or a small business owner type structure or governments uh, like a distributed government system. It can be, you know, with education and, and 
especially in education right now, they use meritocracy a lot, both with the children doing their online courses and adults. You also have the different clubs, Boy Scouts, Girls Club, Boys and Girls Club, 4-H, and they all have meritocracy in their system. Then you have the Army and military that have their meritocracy system. So it's already in use in different um, structures. It's value weights, yet not currently. It's a bastardization of uh, capitalization for how far it's gone off the the intended point from when it was first conceptualized like you were talking about earlier in the example of the Chinese government where they're operating off of that bastardized capitalization where there's a, a severe lack or deficiency in checks and balances and they're focusing exclusively on an extraction aspect they're focusing on how much they can get out of what they want. That's non-inclusive. It's all about them and the dollar, the bureaucracy, the politics and the corruption. And, and you know, all those things, the doors are open for. With a clarification of going back to the roots of what these things originally mean and how they diverge through history or our interpretation through these different cultures and societies, we can basically reverse engineer and go, yes, we like this. No, we don't send it out for a consensus and get everybody's updated feedback with basically a voting type system where everybody's got a voice that's not thrown out the door or bought by, uh, you know, people of malicious intent. It's a refocusing on the core values that we all agree on and working out from there. So, so a generative system following the golden rule okay. that's that's okay. the foundation right there so do you have like as i, have, I, like, as I see the independent, the independent merit badger, merit badger. Do you have a methodology, have a methodology? i'm hearing my I'm voice hearing my voice and feedback just back just is that normal is that normal sometimes happens with our volume control let me mute us okay um do you guys have a methodology of creating a value system for the people? We have a methodology. We haven't come up with specific standards. In fact, in OA, we have the meeting on Sunday. It's the Collaborative Visions meeting. For the Open World Alliance. For the Open World Alliance, where we're going to be talking about how, what is the value? Does it change based on your location or is it constant you know there are certain values that each culture brings so where do they belong and there we have some other questions that have been presented there and yeah it's going to be at 10 a.m pacific time um and we'll have a link i can share it with you if you like well let me let me i need to find out i need to find more. out a little um, uh, can you uh, can you or or sure sorry Thank you, because uh, I'd like to show you something. <laughs> what do you think of that? We've seen it. Uh, you guys are on a great development path. Absolutely. And if you'd like, um, we can share the DNA link to the Miro board. And um, we're inviting everyone to become a collaborator on that board. I have a team set up that I can add you to. If you give me an email address, I'll add you that way. And, um, you know, it's like this is about us collaborating together and co creating. And we all are kind of little organisms here, or um, okay, but call us okay, viruses of good. The virus is good. It looks great. Yeah. Before you go somewhere else, <laughs> I was asking for feedback on this more than just the, the the arc of our development path. Like this, this is a specific value system. And not only that, it's a methodology of creating a value system. And so I'm just one I'm sharing to, to show you to go what I think a value system is. And then when I asked you, do you have a way of making a value system? Because you have these merits, these badges, these values as independent pieces. 
but do you have a way to put them together for an individual or an organization or a community to create a value system, which is all of them put together in some sort of art. And, and I recognize what you're saying. And um, as far as that goes, what we like to do is give everybody the ability to create their own value system. But based on the, what is available on that board. Okay, so, so people can just choose any of these marital badges and put them together in whatever form they would. Yes. I, I would like to suggest something to you because most of my research the last 25 years has been around value system. Could, could you put your mute on? Right. Um, could you put your mute on? Going in both directions. No, I'm not. As an option. Can you put your mute on? Thank you. No, I just, like this is a configuration of values. And it's a configuration of values on a universal business model which I call the inflow matrix. So what I've done is I've invented an operating system that can run any job, any organization or any community. But the different thing about it is you could put any value in each of these slots. So if you just took all those values off and then put a, 10 new values on, you'd have a different value system. And that to me creates a configuration for the mind, which creates a field of realization which now acts as a whole and that becomes your sort of code of honor. So I, I believe our like basically each one of these, as I see within your system is a badge. Am I correct? It all, all depends on the different types of formats and, and uh, concepts we're able to manifest between say us and you and any other organizations on that type of project uh, to create some sort of a map for anybody else to pull from. We're looking at it from a bi-directional or omnidirectional perspective where things can zoom in and zoom out for like scaling, for example. The way I'm seeing <clears throat> this visualization right now is more along the lines of like a business process or, or a process throughout, through a project or some sort of path. I don't see any conflicts. I, I don't look at it that way. I like your perspective in how these could adopt as a badge. I'm looking at it from my perspective, how things are just incredibly flexible. And the, the indifference or differentials arising lie in these different personal universes and how they are able to perceive things. And that's a great uh sensor like an iot for the feedback loop to be engaged and on top of that i am working on the mirror board to connect all of these different pieces that have been put there into a more encompassing kind of like you have here the wheel behind you and you know being able to correlate them mm -hmm. based on their level of connectivity and, and how they are interwoven, so to speak. Well, I mean, you, to me, you've got you know, a very sophisticated system and you're also in the process of integrating with other, let's say originators or other game designers or other, like, like I sense you're at basically at a startup phase. Am I correct? And, uh, and uh, yes. at like, like I've been in a startup for 25 years, so it's kind of, I, I know the phase well, but I, I'm not so sure about uh, the next thing. And I've I, I become involved with a, an organization called LCL, the LCL Foundation, and they, they have 13 teams of 12 people, and they're going to take them through a training program next year. I'm a part of it. I'm bringing a few of my tools in. And that's on my end, sort of how part of how I'm bringing my work into the world. And you see, I, as an originator, I don't feel like uh, like a normal player because I want to redesign your whole system as soon as I see it, right? Like, so not many people want to come into your complexity and go, well, let's make it more complex and add this in and do this and do that. So I like playing with knowledge, with, knowledge. with information systems. And 
you know, as I've gone through your work, I'm, you know, sort of seeing what you have that I don't and what I have, you know, seeing where we fit and where we don't. And I think the biggest thing, because I mean, I, I have a, a universal business model and a universal process to create a value, custom design value system for it. Right. And it's, and that's going to be the basis of a software system called the inflow matrix. And so just let's say we just connected in terms of the merit badges and because I, I see you know you have a huge missing piece of just that right like how deep do you go into these values and then how do you account for them i mean essentially what you're presenting is a system of accountability right and at the shared knowledge community what, what we have is an organization called the shared knowledge community that brings 144 people together uh, 12 originators, 12 entrepreneurs, 12 teachers, 12 tech gurus, 12 artists, 12 healers, 12 marketers, 12 mediators, 12 facilitators, 12 youth and 12 elders. Put them in a big cauldron, call it a business system. And that's like a new paradigm sell to build a new economic system. So we're, we're, I think we're talking at the same levels of design, right? We want to affect the whole species. We just don't want to create a business and we just don't want to create a little tool. We want like system-wide transformation, right? Absolutely. And, and, and the kind of uh, system we're all looking at is a collaborative mesh sort of, sort of integration of multiple lenses coming together and in creating that agreement field that we're all in mm -hmm. and um you know that one of the things we do on sundays is we're talking about the, how this collaborative vision is going to move forward and how others can become involved in the collaborative mission we share the introductory packet with everyone that we meet and say you know we want to hear what you think what you would add you know, this is a living document and we're getting involved with Federated Wiki in order to be able to publish it for all the public to look at, do their fork and add their information, you know, do whatever changes are resonant with them, with you. And, and so it becomes that much more of a living document. Mm, for sure. I, I see that and I, <laughs> I mean, whenever to me systems designers come together, there's this, ah, oh, great. And then, ah, you know, like, holy crap, I got a whole bunch of other things to learn and figure out. And so I, I think it's the, the stages of where people are at and how they connect are very important. And I think you've probably seen over the years that people come, people go, and uh, sometimes they stick around. A lot of times they don't. Conflict, I wouldn't say is normal, but I think it can be because people have different ideas and, and want you get creators together, artists together, everyone wants to do their own thing in some way, right? So it's it's hard to create a new category system that you're going to get buy-in at the beginning to get enough people together to really go. And then when you really go, then it's how do you keep up to the growth, right? Just excuse me for a second. Like no matter what stage you're at, there's always some sort of problem, I guess, but that's like human life. How do you fund this? Like, how do you make a business with this? This. Totally agree. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm not sure how far you got down into that uh, introductory user's manual. That where we're kind of aligning right here from our perspective and seeing this is these business processes being applied within cells and teams of different types diverging and in, into their breakout rooms. And it, so we've got multiple levels. These would we in our manual refer to as Phoenix teams going into a further development stage of like the fusion and the forge where things just get more complex for each stage where people are, are kind of honing into each other's vibe and w whether it's a social interaction or a specific focus in say one element out of the four elements whatever their their focus is right it's just a further development and aptitude level 
for the engagement and Fair development enough. of everything. So on the business side and funding, Phoenix Fusion Tour teams where they can just cluster out in all kinds of ways, self manifest through the creativity and uh, diligent focuses in conjunction with think tanks. They're kind of like an offshoot there. Developing and, their projects and their objectives. And this is where different types of overlaps are, are capable of within those two from our perspective only. Who knows what else could be developed from like your team, for example, or our world, uh, Symphonics, S7, New Maps, just all kinds out there is like the sustainable development goals. It's already a clustering, kind of like a sector of society that has multiples, multiple teams and projects and groups kind of already built in to each one of those. And then we take different overlaps and lenses in how we could further di diversify and focus those. So we could go broad, like a wide net, as well as go into a zero, uh, <laughs> zero lens or, or like a laser focus, just hyper-focused. Um, we, we can go from teams that are very sensitive. They're, they're not exactly stable in their emotional quotient, yet they all have extreme value. It might just be raw rather than highly refined, right? Through the other, the <clears throat> development stage, like on the after effect for a Phoenix where they go undergo all of that compression and frustration and extreme exercises that build that level of resiliency and smooth off the edges into this beautiful gem um, that is exposed, not even created, but exposed of the soul spark of the people involved. So that inner beauty. And there are multiple avenues of funding that we can pursue depending on the format with which a business is created, whether it is a nonprofit business, an NGO, a co-op, a for-profit or a government organization. And, you know, even just looking at for Great Works Alliance, we're looking at eight different funding paths. Okay. From I think it might be more. I don't know. We've gone so, through so many edits. It's hard to keep track right now. But generally speaking, like each sector of society is a separate container of funding opportunities. And so the more on that ring through the different diverse uh, sectors of society that are working in conjunction with each other on this central base or operating system where it's like that trunk of the tree, the more things are able to be boundless and scale on a hyper level, like go straight into warp speed from a standing still, you know? It's just only your imagination and your dedication to that with focus are the limits. I, I keep putting the two words, winging it. Winging it. As, as a, a quicker or briefer way of saying it, I mean, I think as inventors, you know, there's a lot of winging it, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're trying out a lot of different things and going down, you're creating something new, so new that, you know, what do you compare it against? You, you just, it's, it's coming through your intuition, it's coming through your, your uh, intelligence, it's coming through all the different avenues that, I mean, I don't want to dismiss what you're saying by saying that but my sense of humor certainly gets me in the wrong places at the right time um so where where are you guys sort of in your own life with this right now like i mean i i know that i get lost in my work and sometimes i'm doing a lot of things i don't want to do because i just have to to get the thing going right like are, are you to the core team do you have like uh, more people on your core team or are you looking for you're, you're the core team right we're most of the core team. We have a tech developer up in Oregon that's been having some difficulties, but he's been on board for over two years. Mm. We started about two years ago in getting this together. 
putting the website together, um, you know, as it stands right now, it's using free software. We're definitely keen on open source software, open source tech developers and other tech developers that can join the team in volunteer positions at this point. But eventually there are paying positions that will be open. Have you put a structure, put a structure together, together so you can have shares and stuff like that? The, we have set it up so that there are different um, tiers to the player opportunities so whether you're a sponsor a collaborator a founder and then we also have our articles of incorporation which detail out what the founders uh responsibilities and authorities are and how the business will be operated and how many so the funds how, will be directed to how many organizations do you have currently using using in a real way in a real way None <laughs> in a real way. None. Everybody's talking about it. Okay, so <clears throat> still in the development and construction process. Are more people on the back end, or like other sort of people have the same idea? Like, what's Jordan? Jordan seems to have a pretty advanced, uh, at least promo video, but it, it's pointing towards I think something pretty exciting. How are you guys interacting together? Right now, he is very, very dedicated to putting together some uh, venture type opportunities through Civil Acts, which will identify with the different badges and, and the different possibilities that we're currently listing out. There's also projects that are develop in development right now that are in alignment with the same path that we're on that are about to be presenting to the public, I believe. His avatar system that he's yeah. been working on with a number of others, like there's Atlas, uh, um, uh, Khalil from Treasure Maps. Everybody has their own specific lens and, and interest that's being applied through these different groups, like Civil X, for example, to create the larger picture. We're all puzzle pieces in that machine cog or cog of machines. <laughs> is the main is the main um hold on. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Like if you look at something like the Boy Scouts and the Boy Scouts with their badges, that to me is what I grew up with. And that to me is is like the sort of the biggest thing. I saw my brother come home, he'd have all these badges and I wanted a badge and he'd get a badge and he really liked that, right? And I think you know, humans are like that with the stars. And, and, and I'm just wondering about like all the stuff that I've seen that I would just one a little feedback, I'd watch the information overwhelm on the first contact um, I make that mistake a lot. I give way too much information and I just, you know, most people can handle like a, a, a tiny bit and I, I pour the whole thing in. And so just, just sort of warning you that, but I, and also kind of like to, to create a merit badge system, you know, by itself, you know, is massive, right? On its own, it's a perfect high aim and it, it sort of is a, is a leverage point sort of with everywhere. But as soon as you keep on adding all the other pieces around it, I think that it gets confusing, right? It gets like, like it doesn't for you. I guess no. I, to be I, honest, I, to be honest with you, it is more about what is the core value system, like you have right here behind you, the core value system of your core values and how they identify with other other individuals who want to align with you okay and okay. everything like expands from there so it's it's getting that starting point of recognition acknowledgement and understanding that we can work together that we're following the golden rule and and that you know we identify with these virtues these traits these characters these skills and 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 what we want in our own life we've looked at um different different methodologies of finding relatability with others and a hero ship lens is one that 
is really, really broad and triggers a lot in our hearts, no matter what age or uh, aptitude we are, whether we're a child and not knowing much, or we've been around the block, you know, a number of times we've got multiple bachelors and doctorates, you know, uh, coming across from the other side of the tracks, you know, in the ghetto, it, it doesn't matter who you are. These are things that we can all relate to and like etiquette. How, how do we interact with each other? So just realizing what those are almost like you walk into a hall of greats or even just a political hall, like in the UN and you're gonna interact with a representative from each of these cultures, where can you find your most impactful uh, relationship with them to have a good footing and a good relationship, avoiding possible obstacles and differences in perceptions? Like who doesn't relate to Batman or the Green Lantern? You know, these are all things that we can all all smile about once it gets brought up. If we start talking about hugging the trees and uh, quantum mechanics and, and dipolar forces, a lot of people, they just glaze over. They don't relate to it. It's not one of their passions. So it is about relatability and being able to connect on that baseline. And that's why the merit badges can be used in the Gini system is because we're looking at those core values as the starting point. This is awesome what you have up on the board. Okay, let me just show you something. This is a, this is a, can you mute your, um, the software that I kind of like is, is organizing using mental models to create the boundaries between things. And so this is one of the models that of six meta conversational fields, like we're either in a business, an intimate family, social friendship or service field. And I'll, I'll just, let's say, and it's a divination. So let's say in reference to you guys, we'll ask a business question. And the, it says, what conversations do we never have that we need to have? <laughs> and loyalty, monitoring, and activities. Now, this is the beginning of something I've called the New Paradigm Toolkit, and this is just a spell. And there's six card sets, and this is three card sets from it. But the card set on the left is the, the values, in a sense. We've got over 100 values here, just to sort of tie into your merit system where you could press on loyalty, and maybe there's some way at some point to press, and then it goes to the loyalty badge um and gives some connection in so i mean the software i'm looking at are sort of ways to connect things together and this is our starting point in terms of a a way to create uh an oracle that like provides remedies and the the this is just the the second iteration it explains more this is just the simplest kind of way that the uh, uh noah put up but in the middle is a conversation type and then on the right is a conceptual lens. I guess you get the idea of conceptual lenses. Well, the inflow matrix is at the community, at the organizational, at the individual, and then at the inner individual levels, a set of lenses that can organize, again, any job, any organization, and any community. So a word like activities is very basic, right? But it organizes everything that you're doing, right, in your business. So monitoring is like the... Uh, waitress in a restaurant, you know, monitoring her customers, seeing, you know, who needs what and loyalty is, you know, obviously, you know, but what are you loyal to? So when you put, you program loyalty into monitoring activities and then you go, what conversations do we never have that we need to have? What does that stimulate in you? The, the thing that I see, do not see here is collaborations. <laughs> Where are the collaborations desk cards? It, it may be the next step. How do you got it well, set up? The thing is like you press on the next level of the interface, there's a start a conversation 
Then there's a start a caravan. A friend of mine has a, an app where you put different phone inputs onto a, a timeline and then you can create a conversation that way. So you could have 10 people collaborating to answer this question together. Um, so yes, <laughs> but, but let's say in, in reference to you, not looking at the structure of the tool, but looking at using the tool in terms of, okay, what do you think? Like monitoring conversations, activities, loyalty, what conversations do we never have that we need to have? Like, how could you apply that to what you're working on right now? Activities. I mean, because of the activities that we're doing. And then how those are principal matters. I didn't hear the last your answer. Activities. And no, you can hear me. Can you hear me now? Yes, now I can. But maybe it was the running. Our CPU was running a little hot and affecting the meeting. Okay. Yeah, because I didn't hear any okay. answer that you said. Because I didn't hear any answer that you said. That's totally on our end. She said activities. Go. So, yeah, as far as I can tell, like, the conversations that we should be having around activities is how people can have activities in their groups around businesses, around supporting each other, localizing commerce, localizing um, the services that are available and, and how people can get engaged, especially with COVID-19 and how that is affecting a community's ability to be actively supporting each other. Mm -hmm. So what might be inter interesting is, let's say there was a conversation generated from this when this is a little bit more advanced and that everyone who participated in it maybe gets a, a loyalty point or gets like a deeper understanding what loyalty means. So maybe there'd be a number of conversations regarding loyalty connected to the loyalty badge. What do you think about something like that? I think that that is a definitely a good idea. And, you know, there there is definitely that component of how do we finance this to start with, to get working on, on the ground level and having uh, collaborative representation and um, cooperation. And yeah, I do understand that value, when you have value and putting money into something, you're more apt to spend time on it than when you are just volunteering and nobody's trying to keep you in check. So connecting with people along that chain uh, process, who's a good lens or, or not a lens, but liaison to connect different uh, skills and passions, P people in different positions, say someone's really into fundraising or someone's really into grant writing, whether it's private grants or state, federal, what have you, creating a chain link that's a map that could be referenced and build the projects to best be facilitated and, and presented to those pivot points, those decision makers. They go, hey, I love this presentation. I wanna get some money invested into this project and see where it goes because of this reason we see it as being not only regenerative but generative and self-sustaining we need more advancement in uh gender diversity and education and anti-bullying what have you and so if we connect the dots uh, doing actual social networking 
interlaced with business networking and guided by the, the spirit of intent behind that, what is their ultimate purpose, the spirit of intent behind doing this project that is going to determine its level of uh, blindness in their ultimate goals? What are they going to leave out? What are they really wanting to make sure is included? How broad of a spectrum and engaging with other people like those intentional investors? There, there's no shortage of money out there. All this basically comes down to from what we're seeing and our experiences is connecting the dots. Everything's already out there. So how do you guys distinguish your work between each other? What what are your main functional roles that distinguish? What are your main functional roles that distinguish distinguish you two? You broke up. Would you mind repeating that? I'm just asking, what are the main functional roles that distinguish you two, like within what you're doing? Like, where do you guys focus your attention? And did you get We've that? been operating kind of like that? a patient farmer, just planting seeds and making our rounds, allowing things to sprout or not sprout, just checking in with a gentle, positive nudge to encourage each other like hey what do you got going on how's your life going you got any cool stuff uh to to brag about oh you know what i know this great person that we just met a couple weeks ago that you guys would probably really hit it off you're along the same lines for your projects and everything as long as we all keep communication with each other everything is able to sift back to that broad net of kind of like that melting pot of concepts abilities uh tool sets, tooling. So everything's at, at your fingertips, essentially. Okay, I was actually asking but between you two in your internal workings, like what do you like, do that? Do you... I just want to know what function is different. Yeah. So my, my, my part in this is that I'm a good translator. I'm, I'm good at writing things down. Um, Nate's good at reviewing and adding and has a more technical background than I do. He's got a more masculine lens than I do. I'm a Reiki master of over 20 years. I've been a victim now, a veteran of domestic violence. And so I, I take from many different parts of my past and share what I have learned. Um, that's the same as Nate, but uh, separately, you know, I'm more of the artist than he is. He's more of the technical director and uh so we're able to play off of each other that way and balance each other like <clears throat> yin and yang you know and we want to be able to present to to the community that it is possible for men and women to work together and synergize within a unit to create something and to develop and work together and and show that it it's not only possible, but amazing when you can take two lenses and combine them or three or more. Are, are you ready to expand your core team to a bigger team? Yes, <laughs> definitely. Because like, no matter what, like what I see you're doing is something that's immense and two people like I just kind of got a team. Like I've been waiting years for a team and I've been waiting for a team to use this system, my own system to bring the work into the world, right? And that's 10 people plus a youth and an elder. So 12 people. Like, are you interested in learning a bit about my operating system and then maybe getting 10 other people to join you? Yeah, uh, we've been paying attention to your uploads. Um, one of your guys on your team that's piqued my interest from the the tech infrastructure lane is uh nova obviously yeah. and yeah getting that breakdown yeah you know what do you guys have set up for your spreadsheets and, and your mind mapping and, and the different types of visualizations and what do we have 
and how can we further refine each of those independently through those those lenses that we each have to best formulate and then come back together and see what correlates and then just continue the uh, development process, this continuous development. Be like nature, rinse and repeat. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's like uh, one of us has a, a, a structured database and the other one has a no, no SQL database, right? Mm. Let, let's merge those and see what works optimally. And what we're going to find, if, if we're going to reference the technological aspects and how that operates in its mechanics, we'd end up with something like sharding which is a lot like micropods working together in clusters, self-organizing, right? Yet it's, there's a relational database still attached. There, there's some sort of thread that attaches at one point or another throughout each entity. Mm. So everybody ends up operating more like a hive. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, whatever we're doing, it, it to me, there's a different pieces of the, different people have different pieces of the puzzle and what I've been working on is a language structure to rule them all. <laughs> it's a joke, but maybe not. Um, because it, the technology couldn't kind of catch up to at least what I wanted to create. And the language structure to me is what really is the functioning behind what we want the software to do, right? Like, I mean, up here, like research and infrastructure, learning, operations, creativity, synergy, services, marketing and stewardship and communication in the middle like, you know, you're doing all those things, right? I mean, you have to have a marketing program. I mean, you have operations that you're doing in the background that aren't connected to services to your customer. I mean, you have services to whoever your customers are. I mean, you have to learn things. You all have jobs, you know, you all have resources. These are very simple words that we all use, right? And so to me, if we're gonna collaborate, you know, with a lot of different groups, we need to have some sort of reference point in language to organize as a team and if you can come up with a better one than this, show me. And, you know, we'll, we'll have a chat. But if you if you haven't and you don't have the part and you go, hey, Matt, I could go to the rest of the people I know and go, do you want to be the services? Do you want to be the infrastructure? Like if you guys had to choose right now one of these, what would you choose? Infrastructure and research. Okay. And how about you? We were just talking, we were talking with uh, one participant of the Deadway Key Project today earlier, and they brought up how to really Passion. focus and passionate. How about now? That's better. That's better. Okay. So earlier we were in a in a Deadway Key uh, meeting. And one of the participants was talking about their passionate project that they're working on is a linguistics project. Going back to, you know, core language and languages and redefining them based on the research and seeing where they split and diverge. No different from the, the tree of divergence and development within Judaism and Catholicism, Christianity, all that, for example. Just how things diverge along a timeline, right? And and so we have a huge interest in that as well that also delves over into law, such as natural law and different pillars of law, administrative, um, maritime, you know, and how things get twisted. And communication linguistics is that vehicle that we all have control over to express ourselves, our creativity, and these different nuances that come from within us to another person and control over how it is to be interpreted. Then we need to redo the, you know, repeat that same process in a feedback loop in order to confirm that we're on the same page. So mm -hmm. if people have different uh, jargon for a specific modality, people within it have gotten so confused because of the lack of diligence in curating these and making these, these, this level of education quickly identifiable as a base reference, you go into chaos. 
I, like, I don't know what you're talking about. We've got three to 200 different terms for the same thing within the same methodology or modality. We could just talk about <laughs> football and soccer <laughs> and the difference between the American version versus the European version of what those two mean, mm. you know? <laughs> so going to something like, uh, as an example, root languages, Greek and Latin, going into root words of those and the dialects in addition to their formulations across a timeline. Those all go into most languages internationally as well as operations of action between different entities such as law and medicine. So if you want to comprehend these things, it would be a really good idea if we had a map to reference them instead of get stuck in a feedback loop that's non-productive of arguments. Over semantics. <laughs> or, or interpretation, or you hurt my feelings. Like if you understood, if you fully comprehend and submit to the baseline standard that's all common, then you're actually gonna be at a much higher level of comprehension and skill. Like if, if you're using assertive language, it's for very specific purposes. And a lot of people these days get highly offended because you're using proper language and proper etiquette. Mm. And they want you to soften things up because of their own inadequacies or uh, lack of education, mm. whether that's their mm. fault or not. It's still something that we should be able to identify, adapt and overcome as a people. And when we don't do that on a forward leaning uh, direction, we're a contributor to that deficiency. Lost in translation. Well, I, I think, uh, so I think I'm coming to the end of my time. Um, how would you like to end this? Well, I mean, I would love to hear your thoughts. We'll send you information. If you give us an email address, we'll send you any information that you are ready to receive and you know it's it's always open to discussion we want to know your thoughts um and again this is about creating that living document a living document that can be refined and modeled for different circumstances mm. and we've got you on messenger too okay um okay. Um, can you turn off your, I guess like for me, I'm the main goal is to create this, right? And this to me is the first map, the beginning map. And then if you can distinguish this, because I think a lot of the organizational structures you're talking about to me are like still in this little paradigm, right? And I'm not so sure in the long run that's going to work. And that's why I like the idea of the shared knowledge community is like a new cell, a new type of structure. But at the same time, we exist within the old paradigm, whether we like it or not. So I, you know, it's, it's kind of like a back and forthness, right? That, but you need to build a bit of a bridge. And I do see it in a game and I do see values as one of the most important things. And, you know, synchronistically or however you're here and we actually met and talked and, that's the beginning, right? Like we have to create some relationship and build some trust and, and see who, as you said, what, what does each have? And then what, what are we willing to, let's say, share? And what do we will, what, where do we want to work together? Because I think we're working at a design level on big systems, at least both of us. And so sure it would be nice to get some help in certain areas and vice versa, right? And uh, find out who else is on the bigger team. And I think like I'm looking at the inflow matrix as this massive mother of all software systems. So uh, I do see at least 20 different parts coming together to create that. And it, it being a software sort of we the people for the people and like an AI that actually helps us rather than oppresses us. So if we can agree on that one, at least in the beginning that we create something that's like fair, something that's like actually useful, uh, that's a good start. Uh, but I've, I've enjoyed hearing what you've had to say, and I agree with most of what I've heard. Some of it I didn't quite hear right, and some of it, again, I have my own sort of understandings, and some of it I, I, I probably didn't understand. Um, but that's that's for us to, to figure out in the long run together. 
Um, what, how about I send you, or do you, maybe you already have it, but I'll, I'll start sharing some maps with you and sort of start the knowledge exchange and, I, and I'll go deeper into what you sent me. And so are you creating a new wiki or just being part of a new wiki? Part of a new wiki. We're part of it. It's not really new. It's just being more developed now. It's a rated wiki. And I think they've been working on it for seven years when we did a global thing. Like yeah. Six or seven years. And when you jump into the project, you do create your own separate Wikipedia page. Your own or page. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, for anyone listening, you, you heard uh, some new paradigm pioneers having a bit of a knowledge sharing conversation. And uh, thank you for listening to us. And uh, perhaps this is the beginning of a, another new show in the very secret plan. But uh, great to meet you guys and many blessings on what you're doing. And uh, I guess we'll probably chat soon in, in Messenger. Thank you. Have a great day. All right.